What's up, everybody? Welcome back, back, back. I guess times three. Long time no this see. Is three episodes <laughs> in one, essentially, <laughs> of our Jujutsu Kaisen coverage. Um, yeah, clearly there's been a gap for us. Another one, essentially. Real life things have gotten in the way. I would say a little bit. I've moved. Can't really tell from my backdrop, but I'm in a different location. Out <laughs> here, started or restarted coaching young men in the game of basketball, instilling them with life lessons. Not really yeah. sure what Dave Tall has been up to, but essentially <laughs> the NFL season has started. So yeah, a lot yeah. of things have been going on. Um, and honestly, we just talked about it a little bit before this has kind of worked perfectly. These three episodes are a nice little like combo of the Gojo and Shibuya fight. So this is going to work. Essentially, we're going to have three buckets to cover all these episodes. They won't be individual episode buckets. The first bucket will just be us talking about the initial kind of UG warm up fight with the grasshopper slash locust. Then the middle bucket will be the meat. Or the veggies of the sandwich. How about that? Nah, <laughs> the tofu no, of the, sandwich. Nope, <laughs> the tofu of the sandwich. We'll which... meet you in the middle with salmon. We'll meet you in the okay, middle with fine. salmon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that will be the Gojo fight that we'll talk about, and then the end, the bottom piece of bread is going to be just us talking, kind of next steps, the aftermath, how everyone's handling it, type of deal. Uh, so, without further ado, we're back to Jujutsu Kaisen. Yuji hasn't really been in the story a lot leading up to this. Obviously, we had the flashback episodes with Gojo and Geto. Now we're getting in. This is episode eight, I believe. A fight. A lot of people I saw commenting that like this was badly animated. Well, the grasshopper one. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of agree. I, I mean, I I don't like the ghosting. Like, but they did the later I didn't fight even know, well, so I don't care. I didn't even know that was a term until yeah. I saw that's the, one I learned. I learned the outrage. It, yeah, the outrage on the internet. I thought they got the gist of the fight down pretty well. The one thing I will say they missed is, or they missed on potentially is like the aftermath shot where it's like UG all in shadow. And his eyes are like white and he has like the glowing cursed energy fists. I thought that was like one of my like favorite shots panels in the manga. And it just didn't look as good in the anime. Yeah. But other than that, I thought this was like a solid little like initial warm up fight pretty much for Yuji. Well, I think people were pissed because they didn't really know like what these next like what kind of fight was going to yeah. follow uh, that fight. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty minuscule fight. And I mean, Yuji works him. I mean, it's not even a, it's no contest. I feel like nowadays it's every anime does this where they'll sacrifice like one or two episodes of like animation quality and just save it for the end. And that's kind of what they did here a little bit. Um, I didn't think it was that bad. I, people are just very picky when it comes to anime nowadays. We're just so spoiled. Like Jujutsu Kaisen has shown some of us, like shown us peak animation for sure. So this, was a little bit of a downgrade. I thought it was fine, but again, I think Yuji's just so bad, badass. And like you said, Kyle, even on the other podcast, like I would forget his name because we hadn't seen him yeah. in so long, and I, I felt funny. terrible not remembering his name. But kicks him ass, and I love his power, even though it is very basic. It's just it's so cool to see it animated though. Like the blue looks so clean, and how it's like very comic booky. Like it's yeah, yeah, feels like yeah, the comic book really cool. uh, comic book font on microsoft word <laughs> yuji's cool and I, I i really like his uh pink hair i just think it looks yeah, good. i was just gonna say it works really well all of it together too like the pink hair with his like dark blue and red outfit with like the like brighter blue fists look like really cool all that combined for sure i like the line too at the end when he goes you've eaten people you know what that means right it's like i'm gonna yeah. fucking kill your ass yeah yeah i done love, boy i agree i think this episode it reminded me how much i do love yuji's design but i was in my head thinking we could use an outfit upgrade we could get a new outfit on you <laughs> just wearing the school uniform yeah they've worn this worn the school uniforms for so long now and i could get a new outfit change for him i like honestly everyone. don't i don't mind the school uniform because i like how his is unique like i like how he has yeah. the red hood or whatever like i think it looks good it it's very him yeah for sure and i like one small last comment for me is i like this kind of distinction we have for cursed spirits where it talks so he's like okay this is like a high level cursed spirit like it can understand human speech and speak back to me i just like that as like a small little signifier of strength almost he's clever 
<laughs> that was funny. <laughs> it is getting. And he's like, getting... you know, clever people don't always just say they're clever. And he's like, oh, what? <gasps> <laughs> Nani? <laughs> it's getting. It is a good reminder because a lot of the villains that we've been introduced to are obviously like special grade curses that can all talk, and so, the, and obviously the ones that can talk are becoming more abundant. So it's just a good reminder that okay, the the power scaling between the two sides, like the the evil side is definitely increasing over time whereas like this little grasshopper villain can even speak like formulate sentences and talk in human tongue yeah and may may makes that comment too i think in episode 10 where she's and, like wow they're just kind of you know they're just coming out of the woodwork essentially type of deal which is like a, a definitely a cool idea but then so, we it breeds that's... into the uh may may comment on ug saying he's already easily a gr whatever grade one sorcerer yeah. like it's not even close like he was able to mm -hmm. beat that grasshopper so that was just just a cool reminder that our our boy is the man it's not all about gojo which for me it might be but it's not uh, all about i mean it. it won't be moving forward but we'll not get there. moving forward yeah and we're, we'll get into it right now actually we'll move right into that gojo fight so three episodes worth of a gojo fight basically i'm not we don't really need to talk about an episode at the time but i guess just to give us like a, a general kind of framework of how it happened Episode eight is kind of like the intro of just um, Jugo and Hanami and Choso versus him. And then we start to get more into like, all right, um, they're kind of popping off. And then episode 10, kind of Mahito gets involved and, or I'm so sorry, that's, that's a lie. Episode nine, Mahito gets involved, the prison realm gets involved, and it starts hitting the fan. And then episode 10, we're kind of getting into this, like, what happens after type of ideal. So I would say the floor is completely open the whole fight. We're obviously not going to take it in order of what happens. There's one moment, obviously, I know we're going to die in to talk about, but we'll just get after all of it. I just like the uh, the back and forth that we get during the the beginning, at least, of the Gojo, jo Jugo, all them fight, where it kind of shows you Ghetto talking to Jugo in yeah. the past about how we're going to tackle um, they're just on a playground. Gojo. I thought it was funny too. Yeah, and there's like kids <laughs> running around too. It's just like so weird. Um, but I like the parallels there because it helps us break it down step by step what their plan was and how they actually were planning on using Gojo. Like obviously the first step in all of it was to just bring in a bunch of humans so that way they could kind of run rampant, go around not having to worry about controlling their powers where Gojo would have to make the decision like of either using his powers to the full extent and killing everyone or holding back and limiting the amount of people that die in the process by the, the actual curses here. Um, so I like the parallels here and again, quote unquote, ghetto just showing off the intelligence in these scenes, just knowing Gojo to a T I guess the questions about that will come when we get to that point of that reveal. But overall, my God, my guy is just the man. Gojo is literally just the fucking coolest, one of my favorite anime characters ever. And I'm not even like hesitating anymore when I say that. Like he is just the man. I just love for real characters. Yeah, he's up there, man. I just love Damn. characters who are one cocky about their powers and two like can just back <laughs> it up. And the white hair, he just he's, his character design is great. Like everything about him just hits the mark for me. And I was so hyped watching these episodes. Just him ru running rampant and just killing everything was incredible. The scene that I was dying for is when he just like crushes Hanami against oh the wall my. with God, yeah was, with the fucking yeah. um what the hell the limitless it, it's just like and he even says like to Jugo he says like you're gonna keep whatever like punching me or like pushing me with domain amplification from that side but like do you think how long do you think this asparagus over here can hold on and he just turns around and just fucking crushes him against the wall no or, or her maybe i actually don't remember but just so awesome just the splatter and then she goes like ah yeah, obviously he's not he's just dead now i have to say the names are confusing and i remember getting confused while reading hanami is the demon with the antler eyes yeah, right. Was... And then there's Nanami, which is the teacher. Yeah, and then you right. have it's Joe. You guys keep saying Jugo, but it's pretty sure it's Jogo, right? Jogo. Jogo yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Jogo and then Gojo. You know what I mean? And like Ghetto. Yeah, and then Ghetto. <laughs> yeah. But Jogo and Hanami, 
they are pretty fucking sweet, man. And they're like Jogo is a savage the way he just flies around with the lava and stuff. I just I think this whole fight is so fun. Gojo, his design with and I know this is like goes without saying and it's old news at this point. We're on season two, but his eyes being covered. I think it's that's my favorite part yes. about his whole design, bro. It's yeah. sick because it's like he doesn't even need to fucking look at you, bro. He just fuck you up at all times. There are so many great moments in this fight. Like the first one that I'm thinking of, obviously, is um, like you said, Kyle, when he blows up Hanami, like they, they're they're not letting him use his abilities and he's just like, all right, I'll just beat you in hand to hand combat. I love that. And he just fucks up Hanami. And then J- Joe goes like, ah, uh, this might not be so good for us. Immediately transitioned to hit and run tactic. He's like, let's use the crowd. Like, and then he's, I love oh. when he yells at, at Choso and he's like, if you don't help, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> and then he rips out fucking Hanami's like roots yeah. from the eyes. That was savage as well. I fucking yeah. love that. I'm sitting here with my mouth wide open. Like I should have just known this was coming for these three. That fight is i mean gojo should have they had to do all that to dismantle his ability and he still pretty much worked them i mean they're lucky with the result and how it all played out like it was obviously such very very well planned by ghetto or pseudo ghetto however you want we're going to refer to him um from this point on um I also really love Choso. I think his power is great. And Dave, like, I think that's one guy to keep um, who, an eye on. Who are his brothers? The one was like... It was like the end of last... I remember the one had the mohawk, but he said he had two brothers. Yeah, so they were the together. One. And it was at the end of last season when him and Nobara... I mean, um, Yuji and Nobara were, like, fighting those two, like... Yeah, the one had, two like, people. A, the one had, like, a Hitmonlee oh, kind be- of body. And then they became one, though, or something like that, right? Or did they're, they... they're, like, on the truck, too. They're, like, driving away. Like, I'm picturing that guy with the mohawk. But Basically, yeah, like, it was like when like an Yuji... old-school rocker. It's when Yuji first did his Black Flash. It was the first time he did a Black oh, Flash. Oh, okay, yeah, Right, yeah, Kyle? Yeah. Now, that he fights... That's Hanami. They're both definitely dead, right? He uses Black Flash for the first time. That, yeah, they're totally dead, though. Yeah, okay. But he... Oh, no, maybe Nobara did a Black Flash. Anyway, they had, like, a tag team. Nobara yeah, yeah, yeah. and Yuji versus mm-hmm. the two... Choso's two brothers. Yeah. So Choso has it out for Yuji right now. And... Choso was in the end of season two. It's yeah. difficult to, like, remember. But they're, like... He's playing, I think, the game of life or, like, Monopoly with, I think, Jogo and Mahito and, like, maybe Gato at the end of it. And then, like, he has, like, a feeling about, like, his brothers dying and then now he's back kind of deal. Oh yeah, yeah. So like he has that like thread is running he... through with and he mentions it about Nobara and um and Yuji. Is he implied to be the strongest of the brothers? Ah. They were the other two were strong. It's just I guess I'm assuming that because like Chozo's out here running with Jogo and Hanami. Yeah, I would say and also just the idea of like he's still in the story, we're getting later in the story, Yuji's getting stronger type of deal. So I feel We're like at it's... the veggie and potatoes, as Kyle <laughs> tried to instill on us. It's uh it's easy to infer that, I would say. And I don't think you're wrong to infer that. How about that? But yeah, and yeah. then Gojo, I mean, again, just to go back to Gojo crushing Hanami, I like how he just smiles. Yeah. Next. He just has oh. that sick, like, wicked smile on his face. Like, he's just having a blast yeah. fucking up these curses. And mm, and he's just walking towards him so casually. I love it. And then fucking Mahito ruins everything. Although, really quickly before that, when Joe goes, like, throwing actual humans at him, and they're just, like, freezing in air. Yeah, so just, well, it's so funny. <laughs> they, they mention it early in the fight, how, like, there's two people talking. And the one, the one random guy's, like, like, what are those two saying? And the other guy's like, two. Don't you mean four? I like four. How they did that yeah. again. And mm-hmm. then again, so some people around can kind of see what's going on. And then other people are just completely fucking off. Like, they're literally just floating in the air around Coach. When so the funny. fight is happening, in my head, when I'm watching, like, the bystanders, in my head, some of them are just watching this happen and they're just seeing these bodies just explode next to them. They're just, they have no concept of what's happening. They're just looking around and they're just like, pop one goes by. There's one body pop. There's another one. Like I actually like, I actually like the detail that you're pointing out too, because there were times where they were in the track, like the subway track. And there's people just waiting at like the gate, like on their phone. Cause they literally can't see anything. anything. It's like hilarious. I actually thought to myself, like, are these people, 
are they what's their problem are they stupid and, and, then, I just, and then i was like oh wait <laughs> and gojo uses that to his advantage or I guess it's not to his advantage, but he kind of realizes like people are realizing that he yeah. is the source of like all the death kind of because they can't see anything else. And so he's using that. Oh, it is to his advantage because he yeah. wants the space to be able to use. Right. They're like, get, he's like, get away from me. Yeah. 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 And then once the space comes, like you mentioned, Mahito's That's train Mahito. full of yeah transfigured humans comes <laughs> and they can see them. So I just love the little like jump out of the train and he does like the little Mario pose and just goes, Jogo. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. I love this the idea of the Mahito is just like a little kid type of thing. I, he's mm. obviously a dickhead, and we don't like him, but I, I love his characterization overall as a character. Yeah, he was he was literally playing with the birds and shit at the playground. Yeah. Um, yeah, I uh, that what come what follows the train's arrival full of transfigured humans, dude. Gojo, <laughs> that was savage, bro. He's just in, he's just unbelievable, I and he did it. In what him. what was it like? One hundred eighty seconds or something like that. Two hundred and ninety nine. Yeah, well. Fuck. So three, a little over three, three, three minutes, minutes and 19 seconds. That's it and was he so just, cool because I mean, it's a little the, longer than that. All though. three of the curses are just sitting there thinking like, oh, yeah, what are you going to do here, Gojo? <laughs> like they're all calculating like, oh, uh, what's your next four play minutes here? And 19, uh, four minutes and 49 seconds. Sorry. Continue, Dave. No, you're, yeah. They just assume <laughs> that 59 seconds too. <laughs> they just don't assume he's going to use the infinite void. And it's just him with his like hair yeah. covering his eyes. And it's just them thinking about it. And then he just crosses his fingers and hits him with the infinite void. And I, I'm just it's like a whole intense off. monologue because they're like comparing him to Yuji, and they're like Yuji's like too much of a goody two shoe. Like he'll he can't accept any level of collateral. Like Gojo, obviously he has some icy logic. He can do it, but at the same time, like he has a limit. And then it's just like bang, domain expansion. And they're like, whoa, 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 what? The and Yuji. he calculates too. He's like, okay, maybe like two tenths of a second is like what a normal person can handle. Yeah, and they get like I think they they said it's a half a year worth of info, and then like in the aftermath they could return to society two months later, and they're all just like unconscious standing up, and then what's just even, five minutes of him fucking shit up. What's even crazier about that too is Gojo had never tested that theory out. He just knowing his power so well, he just made the assumption that if it was any more than two tenths of a second, then they would all just perish. He, like he was deducing that in his head in the moment. He's He's the goat, man. I fucking love Gojo. This was the most badass thing I've ever seen, almost. It was really interesting, too, seeing him, like, breathing heavy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, yeah, that was shocking. That was yeah, shocking. Like, that was that was pretty cool, though, that, that they showed that. And I like he just has, like, two transfigured human heads in his hands. He's just, like, palming them like basketballs at the end. It's a testament to their planning, man. I mean, you got to give it to Mahito and Ghetto. Like, they've really thought this out. Uh, Ghetto obviously knows the power, Jojo's power more than anybody on earth. And, and I mean, it's unfortunate the way it happened at the end and he's going to inevitably get trapped, but like frick man, that, that display of power by Gojo is, uh, yeah. you know, very like we were talking about demon slayer and everything and how great it is. That one scene's better than all the fights and I'm um, demon slayer. I mean, let's be honest. I, it is. Come on. I do not agree. Dude, uh, it is. It's close. I, it's not close. <laughs> I, don't I love agree. Demon Slayer. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I say it's I see sick, what you're for saying sure. here though. No, this is definitely like the highlight for me so far of Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, because Gojo's always come to my mind when I think of this show, to be honest. And now I have like the perfect scene to attach it to. Like this. let me just let me just rephrase that, I guess. I still think it's the reason why I think it's the best is because in Demon Slayer. Well, sorry. Gojo is like so strong, like his power scaling in this universe. He's like he's like OP. You know what I mean? And it's such a great display of that. There has never been yeah. a display like yeah. that in Demon Slayer. So let no, me right. let, let me rephrase that like that. But with that being said, I guess Kyle continue on. Well, actually, no, yeah, I, 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 it would be like I guess like Michael Jackson in Demon Slayer, just like killing a bunch of people in a millisecond would be like kind of the equivalent. Oh, yeah. Demon Slayer is like it gets me so emotionally invested because Tanjiro has to struggle. Watching the struggle is why I enjoy Demon Slayer. One yeah, thing I, I mean, actually too. it's funny. So I actually have the replay going of uh, episode. I think it's episode. nine. <laughs> no, it's just 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 for I, I want to make sure I'm hitting everything, but. <laughs> When one of the first monsters come out of the train, like you know, some of the people are wearing costumes, mm -hmm. 
in the background, I'm pretty sure this is like Joaquin Phoenix's like Joker oh, looking cool. character with a Harley Quinn looking character next to him. So just yeah. shout out. They, they, they got the re- references in there because they are be fun because they actually have. I mean, they do a decent job of doing like modern cultural references mm-hmm. like in the show. So it's cool that they actually would incorporate like a DC comic book character here, too. And I don't remember off the top of my head anything specific like that in the manga but like what a perfect opportunity to have like a little level of creativity as like Mm -hmm. a you know as an animator essentially i mean obviously they're very their workloads are very high Mm -hmm. but i'm sure maybe this was like a nice little like oh let's mess around and throw in some shit that i like yeah you know your own little personal flair let's say but now we get the reveal yeah so after the display of power Gojo's catching his breath a little bit, and we see that Prison Realm is sitting on the ground right there. And Ghetto, cool, calm, collected, obviously planned all of this out, like Alki has been mentioning. And Yo. just, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> and just the look on Gojo's face, and it's just the the memories come flooding back, and it's just, just enough. I mean, we we learned, I think, at the beginning of episode nine, so this is all kind of still happening in episode nine, that all they need is for Gojo to be within four meters of Prison Realm for one minute. That was funny too how um Joko gets pissed at that. He's like, that's literally an impossible task, which is like an insane level of respect on Gojo's name for sure. Yeah. But obviously, pseudo Ghetto knew what he was doing. All the memories flood back, and it's just enough time. There's just like an iconic quote here that people were just like discussing all the time on the internet. I remember reading the manga as well when it and just like when he says, Who the hell are you? Your body, your cursed energy. All the information provided by these eyes is telling me that you're Suguru Ghetto, but my soul is rejecting that. And naturally, all the people that ship them two together are all like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's funny. So, good. so I want to say something to everybody listening here. Um, if you haven't done so, definitely go watch the Jujutsu Kaisen movie or read yeah. chapter zero online. Uh, with that being said, is this are we fair game to just spoil? We're allowed to talk about that I freely, mean, right? Yeah, movies fair game. Obviously, yeah, I mean, this reveal is yeah, fair we've game seen it, we've read it. it. It was a good little so, into it. Dave. Like, you haven't mentioned I, this at all. And I, <laughs> me and Kyle in the background were like, yo, I've said, like, should we? Be, I asked, should we bring this up? You know, because this is like a fact. We know that Ghetto is dead, Dude, like, I, we know he's dead. I don't know why. It never crossed my mind. I really have no explanation for it because obviously I watched the movie. I saw the end that obviously Yuji is the one that beats Ghetto and Gojo is the one that has to be the one to deal the death blow. Not Yuji, Yuta. Or Yuta, sorry. Right? Um, yes. Yeah. Yuta, sorry. Um, That's okay. Again, but I guess the reason. Names. Well, I guess the reason I didn't think that. I, I guess the reason it, this was like a shock to me was because we never. <laughs> Got the like on screen confirmation death blow of Gojo to Ghetto. So I guess in my head, when I came out of that movie, I was under the assumption that something like he didn't do it. Like it, it was open ended, like he didn't do it. He could have done it. But then you go, then you start thinking about the character that we're seeing now. And it's like, okay, where did the stitches come from? Why is that a thing? I don't know. That just, I, I feel like subconsciously I had recognized like that being a part of like, the introduction to like evil ghetto was the stitches and him not being evil was non stitches. I just never brought it up. I, I don't know. I just, I guess no, I never honestly, thought of it as something. I'm kind of glad that you had like a surprise yeah. in this reveal. Cause while we read it, like Kyle, like chapter zero, I hadn't read chapter zero while, while, yeah. while, um, reading this originally i don't even mm-hmm. i'm not actually 100 percent sure when chapter zero was actually released it was much before the movie and i watched the i read and watched movie when it came out like so but you had read this reveal already before knowing the events of no what i'm saying like it was no, yeah. it was organic for me this reveal in this episode like oh, while yeah, reading yeah. it so like it was never... organic for me as well right, right. so i'm glad because it was definitely like a what the fuck moment i mean I was definitely wondering what the hell's going on with the stitching on his forehead, yeah. like for a hundred chapters. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty cool that you saw that with the, um, what the frick is his name, Kyle? D- did they reveal? They revealed his name, right? No, they haven't said who no. is the the. They're just saying that someone. That's like is the end of the arc. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They well, haven't said. Never anything. mind. No, I mean yeah. it is supposed to be a reveal. I feel like I've been looking out mm-hmm. for a name, but they have not given us one specifically. So yeah, you're good there, but. 
I'm like, I just feel so sure. stupid. I just don't know why I didn't process. <laughs> Dude, how about that, the like music? The music here. I literally wrote again another little note. The music. <laughs> I thought it was so good. It's they just. I, I think they did this really well. I'm sure that like a lot of people that didn't know this was coming. Again, like it's an emotional moment as well. On top of like a oh my god type of moment, like because Gojo always feels so larger than life. Mm -hmm. all the time like we just talked about he just fucking kicks everyone's ass for the past you know two and a half episodes <laughs> and then this happens type of deal so i just think that it's really funny too that uh gege akutami who writes jujutsu kaisen draws jujutsu kaisen has always said like gojo is a great character but he hates gojo's character because like in reality like if you want to think super logically like every problem can just be fixed by gojo mm -hmm. so this was probably a great thing for him to be able to like remove Gojo from the chessboard and make and it even. See, yeah. And then see what happens there. They have the conversation too, after this where, um, it's what it's Jogo, Mahito, Choso, and kind of get us involved a little bit where they're like, okay, next, now that like Gojo's off the table, like it's kind of even now between mm -hmm. sorcerers and, uh, and like curses and things like right. that. So I'm sure that's like, that for me is like why it's kind of tough sometimes. Like I remember originally being like, fuck, they sealed Gojo. Like that sucks. I don't like this at all. And then you start to read longer and we'll get into more episodes. And it's like, oh, this is giving such a great opportunity to everyone else in the show. Yeah. And um, actually, none uh, was Nanami, right? We're going to get into it. But he uh, explains the implications of Gojo being sealed. And it, it, it actually lines up with exactly what you're saying like in terms of real world our world the fourth wall and the actual story itself um yeah i think this moment this reveal and him getting trapped led to what maybe is my despite the whole fight and gojo's display of power this one moment was to me the best in these episodes when he's like gojo's like you're just going to let him take over your body like that or whatever. Yeah. And get those like clenches and Grabs reacts. Yeah. And whoever's controlling him had a revelation like, wow, this has never happened before. And it kind of opened his eyes to maybe a new understanding of how the like, curse users and, and sorcery works. Um, this regardless, like I just thought it was sweet because we talked a lot about in the beginning of how, when we started this podcast and beginning of the season, just like get those the like, he's got layers you know what i mean he's deep and i'm sure while ghetto did turn to the dark side at the beginning at the end of the flashback at the beginning of the season he turned to the guard dark side he's definitely not happy with what's going on right now yeah so there's like multiple things that i guess i want to talk about and i guess you guys should be a little bit careful in how you answer them because it might breach on um spoiler territory but i guess my first thought is this one isn't really a question yet, but going off of what Alki was just kind of talking about, about how he, at the beginning of the season, we know we see him evil, but then thinking on to the movie zero in his death moment with Gojo, he kind of turns over that leaf again. Like he, he was evil obviously in movie zero and show like the monkeys terminology came out a lot and all that stuff. Sheesh. And at the end, it felt like he kind of explained himself to Gojo but kind of also understood what he was doing wrong. So this kind of goes into a little bit now what I'm, I guess I'm going to ask is the person or thing that's controlling him. I'm gaining that it is a person. Like it's not a curse necessarily that seems to be doing it. I'm taking it as it's a person's curse technique. Maybe they that's mentioned it too, a little bit about it's a technique that you can kind of like etch yourself onto someone else's body. And then I'm, I guess this is probably, you guys probably shouldn't answer just me shouting things out into the void, yeah. but that's the best part. Would that person have a body, like a host body, like kind of like Mecha Maru, mm. or is it just the brain itself? You know, um, yeah. obviously there's signs of Ghetto still being in there. And like I said, he's at the end of movie zero, he does flip over that leaf. And again, because he's resisting this, this person or whoever's controlling him, I feel like ghetto is still obviously in there and he's going to be a good guy so it's mainly just this thing that is i guess harvesting off of ghetto's original thoughts of negativity and like using that to come across as ghetto it's a lot right there i'm kind of yeah i like the way you're taking breadcrumbs <laughs> connecting them formulating a theory out of it that's fun yeah. stuff right there 
That's I like it. how um in this moment Gojo is obviously like, okay, fuck, this is checkmate type of deal. And Ghetto even bring, or I guess we'll say pseudo Ghetto, even brings up like, you know, Yuta can copy curse techniques and he has, you know, this almost boundless curse energy, but like he can't replace you. And like everything I love was this. just to get you off of the board. And I thought that was like, I, he literally says like he targeted Ghetto both for his curse techniques with the, with the curse manipulation and because of his connection to Gojo, which was perfect to create the opportunity to seal him in prison gate. And that level of like planning, even beyond just this initial fight is just like, obviously we're dealing with an entity, a villain, uh, something that is just willing to go to insane lengths to do whatever is necessary. And then I guess my other question will be, I don't know again, if you will be able to answer this, but it seems like this, this person's ability allows them to gain the memories of the person that they're controlling. Is that correct? They that's true too, yeah yeah okay that's yeah. what I, I figured that i just wanted to get that that confirmation out there i'm gonna say no comment on your other things though yeah yeah that's frankly. what it's, that's basically what kyle said so there's just like multiple yeah. things that i'm trying to think of here i'm going to assume that it's kind of like a mechamara situation like i think there is going to be like a host body or like main body and the brain is just kind of out there hopping around and keeping this person alive. maybe like a pain situation there you go pain from naruto kind of situation all right. The last comment I'll make on the Gojo stuff, I guess for me, obviously we can still talk about it for as long as we want. I love the, like the prison gate gets all heavy and drops to the ground and then the mm -hmm. eyes on it change to the blue. It's just like so fucking awesome. We get the cut of him inside and he's just kind of lounging. And he's like, well, okay, this is uh, a bit unfortunate, but uh, it'll all work out. Like, I, I believe in everyone. <laughs> like, he's not even trying to, like, really resist the cage. And yet the cage is like, this guy's yeah. too strong. <laughs> <laughs> he's just so much for it. It's just fucking awesome. My actually one other comment I want to bring up, too, is I love that they were talking about Utah here because he's Utah's a mystery to us still. I mean, we saw what did you what would you call that like curse that was attached to it rika rika talking about rika yeah rika himself yeah like because does, big... he, does he have rika still like i'm pretty sure that was under the assumption that he he doesn't have that he's kind of just like a sorcerer now with well it's weird like she she was exercised or something but he's no longer like cursed by her but she just like remains and he can kind of tap into the vast amounts of curse energy that, that she, she has. Had. Okay. And that's what yeah. they mentioned because right, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. He like you're about to say, he mentions here that Utah has like an insane amount of curse energy. Like he's the only one other than Gojo that can kind of face him because his mimicry. Mm -hmm. We know about his mimicry, uh, okay, but yeah. but it's like so it's cool. one thing to be able to mimic and another thing to be like have limitless the way Gojo does. I just yeah. like the references a lot because I just I, I guess it's been so long since we've seen Yuta, heard of him. It's cool hearing that Yuta is actually like top tier yeah. also. He like, always gets kind of. respect put on his name when he gets brought up. Like that's awesome to me. Like the fact that they yeah. were even saying like that they were even like talking about potentially replacing Gojo. Obviously that's yeah, not yeah. doable, but like the fact that, that it was even talked about puts yeah. so much respect on Yuta's name. So that was just really cool. Yeah, it's almost like he is like almost considered Gojo's heir to the throne kind of type so of deal, sick. which is obviously so fucking sick. badass. Yeah. Yeah. But I just only comment on you two is just have some patience. Okay. You guys want to know some? Yeah, I would love to. Um, the Shibuya arc, like uh, chapter zero came out in apparently 2017 and the Shibuya arc Shibuya? came out in 2019. So, okay. So they so did. Try, I prefer they tried it. to play that seed. I prefer it the way that we experienced it. Where me he too. Popped cause... off the head, and I was like, "What? That's not ghetto." <laughs> yeah, that was better for me personally. I think. Yeah, I agree. I think it was better, and also, I guess obviously because uh, I, know I so. reading, I didn't know anything about Utah. He was just like an enigma, and I knew that he was supposed to be like the only other S grade or whatever. I don't even know if that's well. Now we know, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, also, <laughs> it was sweet. Also, now I'm thinking about it. Didn't Ghetto and Go like maybe another reason why this didn't quote unquote hit so hard? I mean, obviously it did, but I, in my head, I guess I was under the assumption also that Gojo and Ghetto had already met at the festival or that sports events, whatever. Like 
Ghetto does reveal himself there, does he not, or no? Like I thought, I In feel like I one. Yeah, like I feel like I picture him with like his squad, and they're mm. having a conversation. Is that? Mm. I don't. I want to say no. I could be wrong. I'm just trying to think. Like he faces off, faces off, quote unquote, with Hanami, where he fucking does the purple, which is sick. Like but he I drops like off like all those does, villains. Does Ghetto. I guess the question is who goes in to get like the fingers and the the cursed. I'll go back and look at that for the next one. But yeah. I, I could have swore that like Ghetto like shows himself to the school and is like, I'm doesn't he like he announces like I'm going to invade you guys. Maybe not. Maybe I'm confusing it with my hero. I don't know. Well, you I know, think what? he might have been like in the vantage point, like yeah, background. And I guess like maybe Gojo also wasn't the one like wasn't actually there to see him. You know I don't think gonna, he engaged at all. He was going to get us right. He's going to be our friend, and I'm going to apologize if I mispronounce your name, but Aid Goldberg, <laughs> Ade, Aid, they'll let us know. Yeah. They always hook us up. Oh, they comment on the thing? Yeah, yeah with the it. juicy info. Every time we have a question. We got a fan. We have yeah, a singular the, the questions. fan listening they hook to it us. Up. <laughs> okay. They hook it up. I'm excited to see what they say. So that is, for me personally the end of the Gojo fight comments that I have. Yep, same here for me. All right, now we can very quickly here, I assume, discuss kind of this aftermath type of deal. We get, like, flashed to a lot of characters. So we see, like, Kusakabe. We see uh, the, the head of the Zenin clan. We see Maki. We unfortunately see Ichiji. No, I'm sorry. Ichichi? Ichichi. <laughs> there you go. I think I got it the fourth time. He gets stabbed five times by that rando with the long hair and the oh hand. I love the hand blade. The hand blade is really cool. Yeah, that was and, wild. Yeah, we get kind of this game that Choso uh, and Mahito set up with Jogo. Of uh, the first one to see Yuji gets to do whatever they want with him. Mahito and Choso want to kill him. Jogo's like, we got to turn him into Sukuna. So that's kind of where we're kind of left. On the cursed spirit side of things is they're going to run off and play that game while Ghetto has to hang out with the, the prison room. We have Mei Mei is matching up with potentially two very strong cursed spirits. And then we have uh, Nanami is, is kind of going on his own to go back. To, he'll, I guess, obviously eventually discover our friend who's been stabbed. And then we get Megumi, Ino, and Itadori, Yuji are kind of like our other little squad that gets created here. That's like a lot of things, obviously, that I just threw out a lot of little moving parts. I just think we can comment on everything, essentially, that's not like Gojo Prison Realm type of stuff. And then we can get the heck out of here. Shout out to Mechamaru, man, for <laughs> yeah. for still being around. I'd like... So he is actually dead. He just had this contingency yeah. plan, essentially, just the moment Gojo got sealed. So I, I gave a lot of flowers to, to um, Mechamaru last episode, and I think they're even more so bolstered here by like him having such like planned out so well the events that were about to happen and just it kind of puts in perspective the reason why he kind of set up the meeting between him and Mahito. it makes a little bit more sense to me obviously i still think it was a bad idea but mechamaro planned very well for it and i, I think he was he's he redeemed uh, himself a bit, yeah he's an awesome for character sure. obviously it's a shame to see him go because he didn't he uh, he just wanted a body so bad and he resorted yeah, to yeah. to some really bad means to achieve that and it backfired greatly. But he's doing his best to make up for it. He planted these uh, seeds and he's going to guide the crew as best as he can. Mm -hmm. I thought it was sweet. Uh, Mahito was like noticed it and freaking. Um, yeah broke the camera and then get those like well now we're fucked we're stuck here so while they did trap gojo you know they're not in the clear yet and uh we're gonna see how all that unfolds yeah yeah we kind of get left with like i mentioned may may has those curse spirits to deal with we have yuji megumi and ino now have kind of this task let's say of there's the four veils that mechamori tells us about so we know that's gonna happen we have Nanami is going to be doing whatever he ends up doing. Team Zenin is is inside the station moving. So like I had mentioned about the idea of sealing Gojo, this is kind of what it's for. It's to set the stage for everyone else to kind of get after it. I'm really excited for these next episodes. I don't know. I don't want to commit to us doing one at a time because things seem to pop up. <laughs> 
Yeah, we'll see. But we're going to be covering the rest of the season. Don't don't you worry. So if you have the if you're really begging for it and you're seeing we're missing episodes, just hit us up. We can talk about it. We're going to try to do it as best we can, but I'm just I don't want to commit because obviously our track record this season has not been the best. Mm-hmm. Does anyone have any parting thoughts they want to throw out? I think the guy that got stabbed is going to live. I don't think that's just the nature of anime. Even though you get stabbed five times brutally through the stomach, you'll is survive. It the nature of Jujutsu Kaisen, though. That's just, we'll find out. And then my last comment being the two girls that we got from the flashback Ooh, in the original nice. season, they do pop up and kind of threaten the fake pseudo ghetto. Interested yeah. to see how they play a role because I've, I guess I never. We haven't seen if they have powers. We don't really haven't really seen them do anything, to be honest, in my head, from what I remember. So mm-hmm. curious to see how they'll live up to that threat that they put against this pseudo go ghetto that we know is very capable. Yeah, and you um I actually thought of you when I saw them because you talked about them a lot. Yeah. So they're like I, obviously actually, fuck I, this guy. Yeah, I feel like I like when I saw them on the screen, I kind of like patted myself on the shoulder. I was like, these guys <laughs> are gonna be a little they're gonna yeah, be. Yeah, because I mean, if they don't align with pseudo ghetto then he obviously is crooked as hell yeah yeah i I think it's funny his response to it he has two lines that are great when he's like maybe in three lines but he's basically saying like you know here's your lesson like if you're going to make a a promise or or an agreement with a a sorcerer then make sure it's a pact and then uh yeah like do you want to be killed by this body which i thought was hard as fuck and then they say like you'll regret this and walk away and he sits down and he says regret how did that taste again? Love yeah. that. That's fucking sick. <laughs> He's just, I, they've done a good job of like building him up so much. I think in these past three, these three episodes specifically, because we yeah. know he's, we, he's always been like very nonchalantly in characters that we know are very strong, but I feel like now like the mental aspect of it all has come out really hard and more of like maybe his personality. And it's been fun. I think it's important to note too. Um, ghetto when he defected, when he, uh, left defected defected thank you defected the uh the group the core three um he was aiming to eradicate curse spirits and now and curses in general and now he is working with them that's a clue to like i guess the true intentions of ghetto um oh my god let me just Zooming in on myself right there. I uh, I'm excited to to see how this uh, these new groups play out with Nana Nanami, um, Fushiguro, and Yuji, and the guy with the beanie. Who I, is that? Ichiji? Is that his? Is that who that is? Yeah, that's Eno, I believe. Eno. It feels wrong because that's like an Naruto character, but that's I'm fairly positive it's Eno. There's okay, a lot of well, characters that we Ichi-chi, haven't seen. Ichiji is the guy with the glasses that got stabbed. The OG like assistant guy that like oh, was the right. driver and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. There's a lot of um, new characters that I'm excited. I'm excited fight. to see. Yeah, because like yeah. this season is supposed to be 24 episodes, and we're on what episode 11? About to be on episode. Yeah, we're about yeah. to be on episode 11, and like basically we just we're tapping the surface yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, the we have like so many. Start, like yeah, the yeah, chapter the arc... one of this arc basically is. I feel not like closed. yeah, Gojo getting sealed is like the official start. Like this is arc. part one. I think this is like part one. Or, uh, you know, like, I don't know how it was referred to. Being done or yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, part one of the arc. Yeah. I mean, we have to see. We, we know Toto's gonna come back. Like maybe you know, I'm no, excited to see him. Um, My return. Friend, I'm excited yeah. to see. He was in the little documentary style video. Yeah, I'm and excited. All, like, and it's just like they're all like, he's an idiot, and then at the end, just well, you know, he's the strongest. Like May May with her brother, like an yeah, there's a lot of cool powers but... coming, characters, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. Me I'm too. Quite excited. I I reread the whole to... arc, and it's just fucking. It's so goddamn good. The ending is going to be literally amazing. Yeah, it's going to pop off, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. All right, so that's going to do it for us. That's episodes eight, nine, and ten. Three and one. Banged it out like we they mentioned. Said it, they said it couldn't be done, but we yeah. did it. <laughs> it was pretty much a perfect sandwich, though. It was a nice, exactly what we're saying. Part one, this little, these three episodes gave us the Gojo fight. Gojo sealed. Now we're hitting the ground running. Everybody else gets involved. I won't say it a tenth time. If you like what you heard, best way to support us is just going to be to like, subscribe on whatever you are listening or watching on. We are currently covering Gen V. Amazon Prime's little boys spinoff. We've been liking that show a lot. The Wheel of Time is about to run down to the finale. The finale is actually this week, as of we are recording this on October 3rd. 
that show's been great for us, especially on YouTube. A lot of ton of fun. And then we did what? We did the One Piece live action. So if you want to continue on that anime level type of vein with us, go check out our One Piece live action coverage. And that's going to do it for us. So thank you for listening. Once again, twice again, thrice again. We are Bingetown TV. And yeah, that's it. Alice in Borderlands season three confirmed. Oh, spit. I forgot about that too. That's we'll be crazy. covering it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Shibuya Station. <laughs> you are my special. <laughs>